We'll kick off with Roger Clark from Sky. Hi, thank you. Hi, Mikel. Good to see you. I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, um, we all know you played Olympiacos last season and, and how that one ended. Is there any sense of setting the record straight or revenge in this one? Well, obviously, it was a really tough one to swallow. And the way it happened at the end, it was really cruel. After everything we did in the two games uh, to lose the, the way we did it and with the last chance that Oba had. But uh, we moved on. Obviously, we have some feeling towards um, that team. Um, and we want to put it right and go to the next round, obviously. Are you a stronger team, a more resilient team than you were last year? I think we had a better team than we were last year. And looking back at uh, the two games that we played and the way we are playing now, I think we've come uh, a long way. Um, they have some different players as well, but very similar structure to last year. They've been doing really well. They played uh, in the Champions League. They get uh, knocked off the Champions League. They play against City, two really good games as well. So it will be a really tough opponent. People will be looking at this one. We're also looking ahead to, to the weekend as well. Do you, do you pick your side? Do you think at all in, in terms of with one eye of, of the, on the North London derby? Well, we have a massive... Uh, week with uh, the next uh, four games that we have in, in a short period. Uh, we have to manage the squad, but obviously the the main game is tomorrow and we have to focus on that because um, tomorrow's game is going to help us for the weekend, it's going to help us for next week. So we have to focus in tomorrow. And in terms of where you sit in the league at the moment, is, is success in the Europa League your best route or, or or most reliable route, do you think, of getting back into Europe, European football next season? There is a lot to do in both competitions. We are still very far uh, to achieve anything uh, direct through the Europa League with the amount of games that you have to win. The same in the Premier League. The points that we lost in the three away games against the uh, Wolves, Aston Villa and Burnley uh, sums up a little bit our season. That We should have got uh, much more from those games and we would have been in a different position. But our reality is that at the end we don't find the way to win. And uh, we have to learn how to win and be consistent winning every three days when you produce um, those performances. And it's, um, it's the biggest margin that we have to improve. And just finally from me, just in, in terms of the nature of the goal you conceded the other day, do you still encourage your team to still play exactly the same way out of the back? Obviously not with the same, looking at the same results, but, but you'll continue to ask them to play out from the back in the way that they have been. I will always do, as far as we all the time follow our principles and the rules that we have, um, the way we play, the way we discriminate when to play, when not to play, the type of rules that we have to play, with the right distances, with the right foot, if not, we don't play. Without the right structure, you don't play. It's too risky. It's, 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 it's what you gain and the risk that are there. And the rewards have to be much bigger than the risk. And when it's not, you don't have to play. It's a no-play zone. You don't play. Thanks a lot, Michael. All the best. Thanks, Roger. Just to say before we go on to the next question, we've got lots of hands up and we're not going to be getting through them. So apologies in advance for that. So um, we'll move quickly on to Ian Abraham from TalkSport. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Can I ask you how you feel about facing an NPR cost? I mean, it's a year on since you, you played. There was a year on since you got coronavirus after playing them. I'm not saying that's necessarily directly, but I mean, it, a lot's happened and a lot happened around that game. So how do you actually you know, mentally feel facing an NPR cost again? Well, obviously, we have the two games to look at and everything that happened um in those two games, the disappointment that um, we had to digest and it took some time to do that because um, it was a hard one and we had a lot of um, faith and uh, enthusiasm in the competition and we were knocked off. And now we have another opportunity, it's the beauty of, of this game. Um, it's a completely different context, but uh, the reality is the same, that we have to beat them twice to go through in the competition and we have to be better than them. You were big favourites last year to win this tie and didn't. And again, I would say you're big favourites to win the tie this time round. Well, but that's uh, what is linked to our football club. But it's true that we don't have to underestimate uh, who they are, where they are coming from. They're coming from playing in, in Champions League. This is a team that is used to playing all those competitions. And uh, they beat us last year. It doesn't matter the manner, but they beat us last year. So we have to be better than last year to beat them now. 
And just a couple more. First of all, the Europa League, um, as you've previously been asked, it looks like this is the only route back into European football for Arsenal next season. How much of a, I'm not going to use the word disaster, but how much of a, a real blow for the club in terms of football and financial would it be if you didn't get back into Europe? I don't want to think that way at all. I am always very positive. I think uh, there is still a lot to play for. And uh, what we need is we need to put four or five wins in a row. If we are able to do that, the things are going to look very different in two or three weeks' time. If we don't, obviously, we don't have a chance because when we have had the opportunity to do that, we haven't done it consistently enough. So it's completely down to us. But um, I want to think that there is still a lot to play for and we have to be with that mindset because if not, it's completely impossible to achieve anything. My final one, um, Sean Dyche wasn't very happy with Alexander Lacazette screaming when he went down uh, under a challenge at Burnley on Saturday. I, I don't know how badly hurt he was, but in general, and you, you played with some, some pretty hard footballers. Um, would, would you encourage your players maybe not to scream out quite so much? Because it, it, when, when we can all hear it now without a, a crowd, it, it can sound a little embarrassing. I don't comment in, in what uh, the other players do. I comment in what our players do and focus on on us. The same as I don't comment how other managers or other players or how they use their strength to weaken opponents. I don't talk about that. All right. Good luck anyway, Mikael. Thank you, Ian. Thanks, Ian. We'll move to George from the BBC. Thanks, Dan. Hello, Mikael. Hello. I'm just wondering if you've got an update on Emil Smith-Rowe, please. Mm. Yes, he's close to returning. Uh, he's going to have a full session today to see if um, if he can be involved in, in tomorrow's game. So after training, we will know exactly where we are with him. Um, sorry to go back to that defeat last year, but is that rank as one of your lowest moments as Arsenal manager and just what happened with Aubameyang in the last minute? I mean, everyone expected him to score. Yeah, it was a tough one. Emotionally... Uh, it really drained us because it was a, a roller coaster during the game and, and what happened, it could have ended in a beautiful way and it, it ended up in a, in a really harsh way for us. And uh, I think emotionally it took some time to get the, the team and some individuals lifted because um, it really hurt. Um, you, I know you said you're a better team uh, this year than last year, but have you ever known a team to shoot themselves so much in the foot this season as Arsenal have done? Because it's just the red cards, what happened against Burnley, and how do you stop that? Because some of it you can't control. No, it's very difficult because there are a lot of unexpected uh, situations in a football match. Um, but then emotionally we have to be much more calm, uh, much more secure, and we have to ma manage the games much better in certain situations. And uh, that comes with maturity, that comes from learning. So every time you do that, hopefully the next one you learn and it doesn't happen again to the same player. But then it may, sometimes it happens to, um, to a different one. The positive things they are things that are in our control and it's not something that opponents are doing that we cannot control or we cannot do. So I think they are easier to fix, but um, we have to fix them very quickly because if not, the margins are so small and you're all the time very close to losing points. And just the last one for me, are you looking forward to seeing Socrates tomorrow, but also are you worried that he's got the secrets to your how you play? Uh, it's going to and be that's good quite to, see, dangerous. to see Papa. He's such a, a good character, a very popular player here, uh, liked and loved by um, everybody. It was a pleasure to work with him, such a such a pro, and yeah, he knows what we try to do, but there is not a, a magic formula, and um, I'm sure he will try to do his best, and we will do the same. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, George. We'll go to Per Adler Carlson from TV2 Norway. Yes, hi, Miguel. Hi. Uh, can you just give us your assessment on uh, Martin Ødegaard so far? Has he given the team what you what you hope for, and also are you keen on keeping him also after the season? Thank you. I'm really happy with him. I think he has settled really, really quickly within the team, with uh, within uh, what we demand to the players, um, his behavior, his attitudes, um, his work rate has been phenomenal. He had better moments than others during games. Um, to give us the special qualities that he has, but overall, I am really happy with him. Thanks, Barrett. We'll go to Simon Collins from the London Evening Standard. Hi, Mikael. 
Um, obviously, this week with Olympiacos twice and, and Spurs, is, is this going to be the week that defines Arsenal's season, whether it's success or, or failure? We are talking about this every week. Um, obviously, it's a massive week for us. We have uh, four very important um, games coming up and, um, and we need to win all of them. That's our reality and this is how we're going to approach it. The players obviously come under some criticism, particularly after you know that Burnley game. Is, is this for a week for them to stand up and, and prove their critics wrong with these four games? The critics for? The performance is this, is this a or? chance for the players to prove their critics wrong? Obviously, you say these are four massive games. Is this a chance for them, the players, to show the critics that, that they're wrong about Arsenal? Well, I think the players have to focus on performing uh, as as good as possible and try to do their best on the pitch. Um, that criticism, where it's coming from, with which intentions, is something that uh, they must not pay attention to because they cannot control. Is the better they do individually, the better we do collectively. Things are gonna work um, better. And um, and that's the responsibility that they have all the time. They jump on that pitch. And just lastly, for me, obviously last year you had you know great success with the FA Cup, but you had nights like Olympiacos, which were so painful. What what is it that sticks with you more when you when you reflect on things? Is it the defeats like that, or is it the victories in, in the Both FA Cup? Both, because you learn a lot from defeats, and and obviously what victories and trophies bring is joy, excitement, and and smiles to everybody that is involved with with the football club, and this is uh, why we are sitting here just to try to make things better and people happy and when you do that obviously the satisfaction is um, really big and and in the opposite side when you fail when you lose when you make people sad obviously internally and emotionally it's it's very hurting